Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 524. It's great to have you here. Tonight, Sasha and I are going to be picking up right where we left off, building her uh, gaming PC. We're going to be learning how to install a motherboard, throw the RAM on there, and even install the CPU cooler and the graphics processing unit. If you've ever wanted to build your own computer, this is the series for you as she builds her dream gaming computer. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and Season 11 starts now. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid-state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN. And the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. I'm Robbie. I'm Sasha. Nice to see you. Welcome to Season 11, folks. First and foremost, want to say hello. Welcome to all of our new viewers, uh, especially if you're watching tonight on Channel 33. In the, uh, in the high desert. In the high desert. It's nice to have you here. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we're very, very excited to now be uh, featured on your, your local station, and uh, really can't wait to get to know you, get to know um, each other, and uh, hope that you enjoy what we have here at Category 5 Technology TV. If you're brand new here, if you've never seen the show before, what this is is a tech broadcast where, you know what, we are just here to have fun to show you some of the cool tech that is available right now. We love Linux, we love open source, so we've got ways for you to save money by looking at some alternative mm -hmm. programs, alternative pieces of hardware like Raspberry Pi. If you're into tinkering, if you want to do it yourself a little bit, uh, we're going to get into some of that this season as well. Uh, so we've got a lot of fun stuff planned for you. Also, hello to uh, those of you who have found us on the internet. Uh, again, we're on Roku, we're on Kodi, we're on Plex. Uh, we're obviously uh, on YouTube. We've got our own website, right. Category5.tv. So however you've found us, it's so nice to have you here. Uh, Sasha, we have got another award as well. <sighs> Yes, a we have. A lot happens in a couple of weeks. I know. We have made it to the top 100 tech YouTube channels for tech lovers. Yes. Yay. That, uh, that list actually comes to us from Feedspot, and you can read the list at cat5.tv slash Feedspot. Go us. Yeah. Go you. It's all <laughs> your fault. You've been watching this stuff and having fun. Whoops. <laughs> and we're on the top 100. How do you like that? It's like a global list, so very, very honored and proud of that. Um, last week, as you know, was our 10th anniversary show. This kicks off our season 11 mm -hmm. right now this week. Uh, we never take a break, so hope you love it because uh, we are going to be here with you every single week. Um, incidentally, now just to kind of get into the tech a little bit, some of the things that you may encounter as uh, an end user, I really hit it hard last week yeah. as far as <laughs> feeling like that end user. Our studio laptop uses Windows 10. I got here early mm -hmm. for episode number 523 because it's our 10th anniversary. We've got to get everything set up. We had a lot of things to do and fired up the laptop for the first time since the previous week's show. Right. Windows 10 decided, hey, it's time to update itself. No problem, right? We're used to that. It happens. It happens. Every Tuesday, they've got their updates kind of thing, or the first Tuesday of the month, or however it works. Yeah. I don't know what it's the schedule is. It's a Tuesday thing. It's a Tuesday thing. So we fire it up on a Wednesday morning. Guess what happens? It starts running these uh, updates. So while I'm supposed to be setting things up on the laptop, instead, I've got the blue screen that says, do not turn off your computer. Please wait <laughs> while Windows updates things. And I, and I waited. Ever. And I waited. Ever and ever. It was a busy day, folks. I'll just tell you right up, straight honest. Season 10 finale show was a busy day. It was a busy day. It was a mm. rocking day. It was so I was thrilled, as Microsoft noticed with my tweets. I was thrilled that, uh, that they were doing this to me. And then when it was finished, I thought, yay, I can finally get my work done. 
and their update broke my bootloader. So I can't even turn on the laptop anymore. Oi, oi. Yeah. So this is the, the day of the anniversary show. So anyway, so all that to say, it happened to me. It really did. And we've got ways around this. So what I did is I created what's called a Rescatux uh, boot USB flash drive. You can download it online. We've got the link below for you. Rescatux is a flavor of Linux that is built to help you fix computers. What it does is it detects, by booting from that USB flash drive, it detects the installed operating systems on the computer. Mm -hmm. it, forget, it just uh, ignores the bootloader altogether because my bootloader is now botched and it boots up the computer anyway. Yeah. Okay, so now, using a USB flash drive that has <laughs> Linux on it, I'm able to boot into Microsoft Windows 10. Thank you, Rescatux. Thank you, Linux. Once again, <laughs> you win, and Windows 10... Does not. Not so much. Slight Linux bias. A slight one. Hey, we've got to take a really, really quick commercial break, Sasha. When okay. we come back, we're going to get into this. Sasha is building her own gaming PC, My own folks. own surprise gaming PC. <laughs> Ooh, stick around. We're going to talk all about it. We're going to get that motherboard installed right after this. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. well, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? Just because Jeff is confused doesn't mean you have to be. Visit cat5.tv slash dreamhost to sign up for unlimited web hosting for your website with unlimited email accounts, MySQL databases, the latest version of PHP, WordPress, and more, and even a free domain name registration. It's less than $6 per month, so sign up today. cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Nice to have you here. Tonight we're getting into part 7 of Sasha Builds Her Own Gaming PC. For Dave. Which is an absolute surprise. Total surprise. Whoops. Hey, I mentioned last week was our 10th anniversary show. So much fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so much fun to answer. Dave in the live audience. Dave was here in the live audience. I went to all this effort to hide everything. Yes. I actually hid it behind. You can't see it here tonight, but we've got a green screen here. So our virtual set is thanks to a green screen. I hid everything behind that. <laughs> Yes. And bless her heart, Carrie Webb came to join us oh, last week. I love week. her. <laughs> I love her too. And <laughs> the most hilarious thing happened because the the first thing out of her mouth was, I've been checking out the show, love what you guys are up to. Like, for example, building a sweet gaming rig? And Dave goes, what? So, I, I watched bits and pieces of that show. Yeah. Of you and Sasha building a gaming thing? Computer? Don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> it's a, it's a present. Okay. Oh, that was amazing. So, what else have you caught on the show oh that's been gosh. really interesting? Well, exactly. Okay, so here's the thing. And Dave caught himself real fast. He knew oh. that it was a surprise. And the thing is, it's because I've been oddly quiet about the show right. usually i go home and i like tell them all about what we talked about and everything and yeah. i've just been like mm, mm, stop following the show on facebook yeah, just don't watch like, it just i'd like you to it. not be part of my life right now <laughs> <laughs> just for the next three weeks yeah, exactly. um so we, he was in the audience and good guy that he is he's like mm, mm, pretending he didn't hear and didn't understand like me on christmas morning when i'm sure i know what it is that i'm about to unwrap but i'm like oh Oh, look at that. So I'm so surprised. Um, yeah. So many of the viewers know I ride my bike from work to the studio, <laughs> and it usually takes me about 35, 40 minutes to ride my bike, and today it was raining, rain in the forecast. So Dave says to me, nice as can be, he's like, well, it's supposed to rain. I'll drive you to the studio, but I'm going to be busy, so I can't come in to watch. Uh -huh. And that's how I know. He knows, because there is no way he wouldn't have just... It happened, folks. Like, so the other end of town. Okay, so The surprise <laughs> is kind of out of the bag. Dave has an inkling that he's probably getting something like a sweet gaming rig. 
But here's the thing. Now, you haven't been following the series. This is part seven. You can go to cat5.tv slash CPU 2017. And if you go there, you're going to be able to catch the first six parts. Right. You're going to see how we selected the hardware. You're going to see why we selected it. You're going to see uh, when even unboxing all the pieces right. and then Sasha getting it to this point last, uh, well, two weeks ago when you started assembling the computer itself. So mm -hmm. we've got a really sweet gaming rig. It's going to have Linux on it, uh, an open source operating system. It's going to have Steam. It's going to have VR capabilities uh, to be future ready. We've already installed an M2 on the motherboard. Are you ready to get into it? I totally am ready okay. to get into it. Okay. So tonight, what I want to achieve is start assembling the internal components. So we've got the motherboard. We've got all this stuff. You're going to need to move your stuff off of the motherboard box there. Let's oh. get a look at what we actually have here. I'm just going to set that aside. Okay. And right here. So here is the motherboard. Now, I just kind of put it back into the box after uh, a couple of weeks ago, part six so that everything would be kept together. I okay. love this board. There it is. Isn't that beautiful? Uh -huh. This is the Hero 8 from Asus. Supreme effects, supreme awesomeness. It, it does look pretty sweet. It's sharp. So we've already put the CPU on there. We That's did that right. on part six. Uh, okay, so a couple things here. First of all, I want to know what they've included in the box because I want to know if there are things like provided screws, uh, things like that, because the screws that I have in my tool chest are yes. all silver, like you know, the silver screws. So because this is a really sweet um, black rig with lights and everything, if I have some black screws, that'll be great. So what do we got? We've got some SATA cables for hard drives, which we're not going to need right now. We've got an SLI adapter for video cards. We've got more SATA cables, and they provided lots of SATA cables. And zip ties? And some zip ties, but that's it. Okay. Okay, so no screws provided there. So let's get into another box here. There we go. We're just basically picking it up exactly where we left off two weeks ago. So okay. Now, one of the things that we noticed a couple of weeks ago, Sash, is that we've got uh, a couple of drive bays here. And when I pulled this out, I did notice that there is a satchel of screws and things. Super, and they're the right Sweet. color. Yeah. So these. Super. So Thermaltake has thought about it with their case and provided a bunch of screws and stuff. Thank so you. we're going to be able to use proper good-looking screws to put the motherboard into the, the chassis. Okay, so you ready to do it? I am. Okay. Okay. We have to install the motherboard. We have to install the cooling system, all yes. that. I've got some thermal paste. Uh, and before we actually set this up, we got a message from C128D on YouTube. I am going to read this. C1, we can paraphrase yes. to some degree. I love you, man. C128D is a longtime viewer on YouTube and always gives us heck whenever we mess up. Now, full disclosure here, I'm not a professional gaming rig developer and neither is Sasha. Truth be told. Truth be told. Yeah. But what we do know, we share, and we're going to have fun doing it. Okay, so there's three points in this, and okay. I will tell you quickly what they are. Point number one. Rubbing alcohol and isopropyl alcohol are two different products. Okay, my mistake. So rubbing alcohol is not the same as isopropyl alcohol. It has alcohol. petroleum in it, which is oil, which will not be good. Okay, don't listen to Robbie. Use isopropyl alcohol. Okay. Okay. Number two. Two. I was installing number two Phillips head screws with a number zero Phillips bit screwdriver. <laughs> that is bad news bears. Oh, C128D, you are getting so particular. You are was... good attention to detail. Yeah, I way to go. I... This just goes to show that HD cameras are going to be the death of us. Yes. Because they can call us on things like which screwdriver we use. And this... since cameras like add 10 pounds, that's like smaller oh, than yeah. you even. <laughs> this is a, a number one Phillips oh, okay. screwdriver. But just for you, C120 AD, I pulled this out of the the. Uh, yeah, that's a the number computer. two. Is that right? This is like a number ten. No, this is like a. I don't know. I don't know my numbers. I'm a computer geek. Yeah, number two. Should it be number two? Yes. Uh, okay, that's what Super. it is. Super. Okay. It says it right on it. They've etched it in. Thank you. The third point. Third point. Arctic Silver is a poor choice for long-term installation. Oh come on now, you're getting picky. Which comes directly from Arctic Silver. Nah. Well, I've been using this stuff for years, my man. Okay, Arctic Silver, this is a thermal compound. I'm sure maybe there are better thermal compounds in the universe. I'm sure there, there are a variety of 
thermal compounds. Here's the truth. This one works really well. Perhaps sweet. we could have gone with a different one. This one is going to be the one. <laughs> this is the one because it's here and it works. Yes. And at some point, I may have to clean it off and reapply it. And at that point, I will reapply it with something, either that or something else. Yeah, that's cool. I guess yeah. this would be the gauge. So okay. C128D's argument is that the thermal compound, which is the connector between the CPU, the central processing unit, the chip. We've learned all about this on part six, so make sure you go back at cat5.tv slash CPU 2017. There was actually a tricky little fourth point. Oh, okay. The power supply draws air from the bottom and expels it out the rear, not the let's other way get to, Let's get to the power supply, but okay. first with the thermal compound, this is the connector for oh. to make sure that there's a thermal connection between the processor and the heat sink. This big okay. bad boy. Okay, so if this fails you, it's going to go all crusty and you can wash it off with isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol. Thank you. That's the one. Okay, <laughs> so that will get it done. Okay, so final point. This was a semantic thing. This was my own Freudian slip where I had said that it's going to blow air out the bottom. It is not. It's going to pull air. See how there's this particular computer has this case has a uh, vent here with a uh, cover to catch any dust that's coming in it's going to pull air in and out the back so it's coming in from the floor and out the back of the computer that's fine okay so just a semantic thing so that's cool okay you ready to do this i am all right so first of all now i'm going to get right in here with a close-up shot for you okay in our computer case we've got these screw keys. heads here to screw into. You'll see also that we've got these uh, kind of, uh, what do you call these, like grommets or, mm -hmm. you know, they, they are for the cables so that you can hide all the cables. This is a fantastic case. This is where the power supply is, so our power supply cables are going to come up through here. We've got all of these all over the place. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so the motherboard's going to go right here. So what you need to do, we're just going to kind of get this cable out of the way, and you need to set the motherboard in in such a way that it is going to be up against this guy that we installed last week. You remember that? Right, I do. A couple weeks ago. Okay. Okay, so let's get right in there. You ready for it? Well, I, I think. <laughs> now, we have grounded ourselves, and uh, so we don't have to worry about static electricity. Now, you're looking at this. Show the viewers at home what we've got here. So this is the, the oh. back header. Okay, so this, so this is, that's the part that needs to show up the back. It right? needs to line up, yeah. Okay. All right? So you, you do that. And I've I got a camera here so that we can get a, a nice back shot. I just throw her in here? Yeah, and you kind of, you don't want to scrape it across the, the bottom. You want to put it oh. in there right at the right spot. I am going to get this. Here we go. And we also want to make sure that the, the you, you saw those. Screw holes. The, the, yeah, the screw yeah. holes, for lack of a better term. Um, we need to make sure that they line up with the motherboard as okay. well and that there aren't any extraneous ones that okay. are going to short circuit the bottom of the motherboard. Right. Okay. Okay. So the way that we're going to do that, Sasha, is just kind of get in here and can I touch it? Yes. I know this is all you. This with is all, all you. Certainty. But we're just going to kind of look at the bottom of the motherboard. Well, uh, pardon me, the bottom of the case and look at where the screw holes are and we just kind of line those up visually. I can see the holes in the motherboard here and I know that, yeah, those are all already pre-placed in the correct spots so we don't have to worry about that. Right. And you were right on the right track here. Let's get that out of the way and then just put that right in there. And are they lined up? Mm. Yeah, looks pretty good. Okay. Pretty close, pretty close. So, you, you go at it so that you can show them. Okay. So, so what we're then looking at here, see the screw hole? Yeah. So, so okay, I see it there. Up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we've got screw holes all over the motherboard that are going to connect in, and we need to make sure that those are nicely lined up so we can screw those in. So, it, we'll have to do a little bit of pushing. Well, you kind of do one corner and then okay. shimmy it a little bit and then do the next. So, right. let's okay. get into our bag of screws that Thermaltake blessed us with. So, what are you going to do first with your gaming rig? Any ideas? No ideas. What are you into? Do you guys like shooters? Do you like um, I flight sims? I like like the oh, I, I guess the shooters to be honest. Yeah. More than anything, I don't like flight sims All too right. much. But Ooh. okay. 
So these these bad boys, so we need to make sure that we get the right ones. So this guy here has a really, really thick threading. That's not the right one for the motherboard. We need a nice, thin threading. There it is. You're going to know because it's only, only one type is going to go in, but uh, you don't want to cross-thread it. You don't want to strip it. Okay. okay. So should be magnetic, I hope. Ah, oh, there you go. nice. Okay. okay. You want to go at it? Now, which one should, which one do you suggest I start with? Is it? Uh, I would start in like a corner. So right back there is good over right by the M.2. Do you remember where the M.2 is? This. Yeah. So this guy here okay. is probably a good, good starting place, and that'll hold the board back for you. Oh, gee willikers. I'm kind of nervous. Hey. I'm kind of nervous. You're nervous? Oh, yeah. yeah, just be careful that you don't, like, let the screwdriver go <laughs> and accidentally misfire. Don't tighten it right up. It, oh. needs, it needs to be loose. Oops. <laughs> it needs to be loose because we need to be able to shimmy that board okay. once, once it's already in. I think it's so okay. now start with the next one. Okay. And we're just going to kind of go at it. So here you go. Yeah. Get her. Get her done, Sash. All right. So just right over here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, each one. You need my help? I'm not allowed I, to help you. I don't know. Sasha's doing this all by herself, folks. It doesn't seem to... It's not really lined up, is it? No. If I push it... Uh-oh. Is it going in? I think so. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's not so bad. All right, great. Okay. Next up. Here's another screw. All right. <laughs> Take oh, that. the gratuitous close-up shots. Okay. So you're pushing kind of toward the back of the computer with your hand. I see yes. your left hand doing that. You got this. You're like a pro. That's right. Have you done this before? I once built a pie. Nice. <laughs> I baked a pie. You'll notice that I put the cover back on the CPU. That's just to keep it clean. We cleaned it last week. And uh, so that's... Oh, that one's really not... Fun. It's it, not is catching. It biting? No. Okay. Hold okay. So on. we need to make sure that everything is... Yeah, everything looks nice and snug back here. So you're doing good. Okay. So that. here's what needs to happen. I need... This is a full body workout, this. Okay, I think that's better. Some good TV right there, folks. <laughs> All right, she's yeah. in. Do we need more than three screws in here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, can I give you a hand just for the yes. sake of time? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to get in there. Here, you be, you be camera folk. Is that a, a term? It is now. <laughs> I just made it up. Okay, so let's make sure that, yeah, see that? So I'm just going to kind of give it some elbow right there, get that lined up. Oh. I definitely did the difficult ones to start. Oh, absolutely. No, okay. you got it started for sure. Okay, we got another one down over here. And the only reason I'm helping out here, Sasha obviously knows what she's doing. I, I am just helping out for the sake of time as I accidentally not, drop a screw. This is not a three-hour special. This is... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's try this. Yeah. Kingston always comes to the rescue. Okay. I I know that you're just, you're learning tech, Sasha, but I just got to say you're holding the camera upside down. Oh, does it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's get in here. Oh, this is not magnetic. That's what's happening. You know what? Sorry, C128D. This is just a better screwdriver all around. I can always tighten it up with the bigger one. So we're going to blame it on the screwdriver, Sash. Perfect. Okay, one more. Okay. Now is this starting to look like a computer, Sasha? Yes, it certainly is. Man, I like this motherboard, and I can say that. Beautiful. I've never said that in my life before. <laughs> <laughs> I like this motherboard. Uh, people are going to come over to our place, and I'll be like, so check out Dave's motherboard. You're <laughs> like, what is a motherboard? It's the mother of all boards. Okay, so now I've got those in. Now I'm just going to get these nice and snug. So just going to okay. kind of get in there, just tighten them up. Now that they're all in, make sure there we go. 
sweet. Oh, Sasha. Looks like a computer now. Okay, so what do you think we're going to do next? We are going to um, put the heat sink on. Mm. Install the RAM. I would suggest that we start with the littler stuff. Let's start with the, the RAM, the okay. um, cables for the... Uh, maybe not the cables. I don't know. Definitely install the RAM first. Because the RAM... Let's get in here. Okay, these are okay. all tightened up. Our RAM modules are going to go right here. So if I install the heat sink first, it's going to be this big honking thing right here in my way as I'm trying to install the RAM modules. So we're just going to kind of change the order a little bit. Okay, show me the RAM modules okay. here. So we have Kingston DDR4 RAM. This stuff is sweet. It's uh, HyperX Fury, so it's nice, fast gaming RAM. And I'm really, really hoping it's going to fire up on this motherboard. <laughs> I was looking at the, at the motherboard's manual, so I'll just say right now, I was looking at the manual, and they said um, that it, it only wants to take 8 gig SIMs. Wait, hold on. I'm a little old school here and sometimes forget that I'm in 2017. Early RAM modules, say circa 1980s into the early 90s, uh, had one row of electrical contacts and were called SIMs, single inline memory modules. Now today, RAM modules, including the ones that we're installing here tonight, have two rows of contacts or dual inline memory modules, also called DIMMs. So every time I say SIMs, I mean DIMMs, and I'm only showing you that the Commodore shirt that I'm wearing is from the same era when I learned to build computers. I was looking at the manual and they said um, that it, it only wants to take 8 gig SIMs. Oh. But then I'm like, how is that possible if it takes 64 gigs of RAM and there's only four right. slots? So these are 16 gig SIMs each, so 32 gigs together. And we are installing DDR4 2666 RAM. And uh, I'm really hoping this is going to fire up. It's going to fit. Me too. Yeah. Okay. I, I can open packaging for you. Okay. So, can I just, for the sake of the demonstration, can I install the first one? Certainly. Because I want to show you how to put RAM into your computer. Here Thank you go. You. I'm going to let you kind of get that close-up shot here. So, okay. the, there are only two modules here. And the reason, Sasha, that I did two 16-gig SIMs, which, again, okay. I'm really hoping are going to fire up on this motherboard. These are beautiful SIMs. The Kingston HyperX Fury RAM, as you know, is really, really good. And it also has uh, built-in heat sinks. So th oh, okay. these heat sinks are going to keep that RAM cool right. even when it's running super fast. Okay. Uh, the reason I did two 16 gigs is because the motherboard claims that it'll take up to 64. So that's 32 gigs if we go in the first two slots. But then we can add two more 32 gigs right. and get the maximum out of your computer. So we need to determine which is DIMM zero or the first one and here we see dim a1 i'm going to get right in yeah. here it says dim a1 let's see if i can show you that and a2 so that's uh our first two uh dim slots so i want to install in a1 and a2 or pardon me no i want to do a1 and b1 and then i'll do a2 and b2 um, the next time if we wanted to add any more ram okay I'll give you that. Okay. Now, Sasha, get in here nice and nice and close. So there's a, a pin here. Right. Can you see that? Yes. This, this is where the pin that you see there on the motherboard is going to line up. Okay. It makes sure that you don't put it in the wrong way because those two things are not going to line up if you have it backwards. Right. If I turn it around now, you see that they, it lines up perfectly. Excellent. So I'm going to start with, uh, with B1. Okay. They're actually color coded, so I've got black and gray. So I'm actually going to skip one. So B1 is here, and I'm just going to kind of put it in at an angle like this. Yeah. And then very carefully, oh, and pardon me, I've got to open these up first. Oh, okay. Oh, How? oh, that one doesn't. Okay. This one's a little different. So I'm going to go from this side. Okay. And then feed it down in, and you'll see that kind of line up. Now, push down and let her click. There it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very so that's audible. now in the motherboard. It's installed. Okay. It's good to go. So we're going to open up this side here for you. Okay. And give you a RAM module. Here it is. Go for it. So it's going to go exactly the same way. And it's going to go in here. Yes. Okay. 
And I put it in this side first? Other side first. Other side yeah, first. Yeah, just because of the way that this one's set up. It okay. doesn't open on both sides. Okay. And just make sure you rock side to side, not front to back, so that you don't break the, uh, the connectors. If that makes sense? There you go. Okay, that so it's nice and snug. I believe so. And then we just kind of grab our finger here and just push right here to make sure okay. that it's locked and just kind of feel that it is indeed locked down. Super. Can you believe it? You've got RAM in there. Here we go. Ready to go. Okay. All right. So next up, we've got the CPU cooler to install, and we've got to get power going into this thing. Right. Plus, we've got the graphics processing unit, which is a sweet one from NVIDIA. Stick around. We're going to be installing those right after this. You've got mad skills. Now, hone them. Learn new skills or improve your existing ones with online video tutorials and training from lynda.com through our special link at cat5.tv slash lynda. Learn software, technology, creative, and business skills you can use today to help you achieve your professional goals. Join today and start learning. We'll give you this chance to try it absolutely free with unlimited access to all of the courses. Sign up now for free, cat5.tv slash linda. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and tonight is part 7 of our series where Sasha is actually building a gaming rig. That's a full gaming computer. So if you've never done anything like this, we're learning a lot of stuff. Now, if you're just coming into this at episode 7, make sure you go back. You can go to cat5.tv slash CPU 2017. You're going to be able to see those past six episodes and everything to come. All right, so next up, oh, we've got the RAM and we've got the motherboard. Everything is looking good. We got to get that CPU cooling system, right. in, which looks a little something like this. Right. Sweet. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, put that right there. It's got a big old 120 millimeter fan. Now we want this to blow over the uh, the cooler. Okay. okay. So the way that we're going to make sure that that happens, and I apologize for having to lean forward to get the camera, but there is a very very tiny arrow. Oh, that tells you which the, direction. Tells the you which direction the air is going to blow. Right. Yeah. So that's we want that pointed at the cooler because it's going to blow that cool air over top of the uh, the fins of this guy. That makes sense. And make it cool down your CPU. All right. So this so. particular one. Sorry. I don't mean to keep stepping on you. No, that's okay. This particular one, though, Sash, has uh, a couple of clips. Every CPU cooler is just a little bit different. Okay. We got a big one to keep this nice and cool for you. A lot of the purchasing decisions were made just to make this thing future ready, make sure that it runs cool, make sure it runs fast, so that you don't have to go out and upgrade it You know, a year from now, two years from now, yeah. five years from now. Thank you for that. Yeah, so this, so we're going to look at that, observe that arrow, and these guys, can I do it once and then yeah. I'm going to show you how it's done. So again, this is just specific to this particular fan. These kind of clip on there. You see that? So it goes into where the screw holes are and clips on. Then that's going to clip on to the fins of this fan. Oh, right Oh. Okay, it goes just kind of like that. There you go. Okay. Pretty simple. And then the other side, same deal. Perfect. Same deal. Yeah, so then just clips so, right on. Yeah, I got to let you do it okay. because this is your thing. <laughs> there. See, she did it, folks. There we go. I had nothing to do with it other than just kind of standing here. That's it. So the fan is on. We've observed the, uh, the arrow that says it's, it's going to blow this way. So it's going to be blowing over these fins, and that's going to keep your, your computer nice and cool, that CPU. Super. Okay. Very cool. Now I can see, you know, I'm going to lower it down just a little bit because we've got quite a bit of air blowing out over the top here. Right. So, and that's my fault. I'm just going to kind of release that and we're going to move that down. I want to make sure that this is done completely, you know, as correctly as we can, being that we're not system builders or anything like that, but we want to do the best job that we can. Yes. You know, so here we go. Does the styrofoam need to stay on it? Is that it's just to keep it clean, Sasha. Oh, okay. Because as soon as I, if I accidentally touch that, then I've basically created a, like a finger grease oh. layer on the oh. contact that's right. going to be 
keeping your computer cool. So we don't want to do that. So I'm keeping it on there just for safety's sake. Okay. Because we don't want to go through that problem. Come on, bad boy. There that makes sense. Yeah, there we go. So that just gets rid of that extra space up at the top. I'll show you what the bottom looks like. Okay. Oh, and it's got a sticker on it. We could have done it all this all this time. We could have lost the foam. <laughs> oh, oh, look at you. Look at me being take. right. Yeah, okay. look at me being all cautious and stuff. Yeah, please peel off label before you use it, it says. That's good advice. All right, Sash. So let's get this guy, this guy off of here again. Oh, it goes, okay. All right, that's just the protective coating, the cover that came with the motherboard. Right. Our, that kept our CPU nice and clean through this whole process. Now we've got our thermal paste, which is just like toothpaste. You want to pull the cap off oh, of that? Oh, now I'm scared. Mm. Okay. This is... Not that bad, not that okay. bad. Okay. So it's, it's a thermal compound that you're going to squirt into the very middle of that CPU. How much? Straight down, about the size of a pea, a little bit larger. Oh, Okay. Golly. Okay. Just go for it. Right in the middle. Bit more, bit more, more, more. Great. Okay. Okay. Does it matter that I just didn't? Okay. Yeah, try to keep it as even as possible. So okay. that is our thermal compound. <laughs> The reason that we're doing it like that, Sasha, is because as soon as we clamp down the CPU cooler, it's right. going to squish that down, okay. and it's going to make it so that it's it's a good thermal contact. Okay. Okay. So I guess our final step here is, is to remove the sticker from the bottom of this. Right. And then we mount it to the motherboard. Okay. Should I just so go ahead? You want to just go ahead and take that sticker off? We just don't want to touch the contact there. Okay. Dude, look at that. <laughs> All right. So there are two little flippy flappies. That's the technical term, folks. <laughs> flippy flappies. And those are going to connect into this, which we installed on part six of the series. Right. Okay. So. <clears throat> so how, how permanent is this if it goes on? It can be messy. Because okay. of the thermal compound. So you're going to do this part. So in hindsight, we could have tested. We could have practiced without the thermal compound. How about you do this part? You want me to do this part? Yeah. Would you be able to get right in? You know what? Just get right in there. Okay. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here, Sash. It's upside down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this flippy flappy, yes. right? That's what we've named him, is going to clip on to this guy right here on the... Uh, this mounting apparatus that we installed. Right. Okay. And then on the other side, we're going to clip the other flippy flappy onto the other side. But we got to start with one side first. We're not going to do both at the same time. Okay. So I'm going to get right in here. I don't know. I'm going to Yeah, try it's going to be it. hard to film something this tight, folks. We're going to do our best. Let's see. What can you see? Uh, I can see nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Uh, and before I do that, one last thing. I'm just looking at the headers here. So there's a chassis fan header. I want to see where the CPU fan is going to connect. There's another chassis fan header. Um, do, 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 do. Water pump, CPU fan. So the CPU fan plugs in over here. Okay? So definitely that's a good place to have that cable. Okay. That's where it's going to lie. And then it's going to go that way. All right. So here we go. Going down on the CPU, Sash. Okay. Feel good? Almost there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I purposely try to make her nervous, guys. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, one is on. Okay. See that one is on? So, now I'm going to get over to this side here. And this is going to be the tough one. Because that motherboard has that fin there that's kind of getting in my way. I know you folks can't see this, but see that fin? It's getting in the way of the CPU cooling mounting. So that's a bit of a problem for us. See that? So I may have to turn that around, which is going to be a problem as well because the fan is blowing this way and out the back. So I may just have to see if I can get that on there which is not 
liking this uh, this bezel. Okay, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I pull that up. Oh, it is messy. Yeah, it is messy. Okay. okay. So, can you guys see that? This guy here is in the way of that guy there. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip this around. Problem solving is part of building a computer and, and troubleshooting and realizing, hey, there are other ways to do things. Big part of it is also patience, Sasha. Okay. Because you need to be really, really patient when you're doing this kind of thing because you don't want to make a mistake that's going to cause Monument. damage or yes. problems. So what I'm going to actually do here, the solution for me is I want to put the fan on the other side so that I can turn this around. Okay? So I'm going to try going the other direction and that is the solution that's going to work. So now, if you guys can see that, I can get right in there. And she's clipped. There we Perfect. go. Okay. So flipping it around was the answer. Uh, you know, but and I, originally I thought, oh, that's going to be a problem because the fan is blowing this way. But then I realized, well, we installed the fan; we can put it on the other side. Okay. No problem. So we're going to do that. I'm going to mount this on the other side of the uh, CPU cooler, just like we did. Oh, perfect. How's that looking? It looks great. Gorgeous, eh? We're going to need that rubbing alcohol to just get all my fingerprints off. <laughs> like I built it myself, really. Yeah. <laughs> What's all these man thumb prints? <laughs> I'm just pitching in. Just pitching in. Hmm? Believe me, he'll be very happy when he sees the episode. Ta-da! There you go. Yay! Okay. Sorry, there you go. So that's on. That's clipped on. Looks beautiful. So what this is doing, this is drawing heat away from everything in here. It's pulling it across uh, the uh, the ram here. Yes. Blowing it out over top of this cooling system, and then blowing it out the back with this other 120 millimeter fan. Beautiful. Whew. That was intense. <laughs> And that's that, it's not that bad, though, eh? No. So we still need to do a fair bit of wiring. We need to get, you know, the, we're not going to be able to get to the cabling today. No, we will not. We just are running short on time. So what we still need to do is we need to get the power coming from the power supply, which we installed on part six. We're going to get that into the motherboard. We're going to get it into the other peripherals. But first, we also need that graphics processing unit. So if we can grab this, okay. let's see what this bad boy looks like. So what do we have here? This is a, and I wonder what this box looks like on a virtual reality set because it's green. It's, it's got some green It's here. got a little green. <laughs> um, so this is a, an 8 gigabyte uh, GD, GDDR5 uh, overclock edition of the GE Force GTX 1070 from NVIDIA. This is an ASUS card. Um, so it's high end, very, very good. It's ready for VR. It's got tons of HDMI ports and display port and everything else. Um, so it's ready for you. Sound good? I am ready for it. There we go. All right. Let's put it in the box. And this is really, we're getting there. We've got pretty much everything installed. So this is what the card looks like, Sasha. So it's cool. huge. So a couple of things about this. Now we've got two DisplayPort, two HDMI, and a DVI output. Um, they're all covered by these uh, covers to keep the dust out, keep it clean. We've got two giant fans going over the heat sinks, which I can see there that are nicely hidden underneath of there. Looks really beautiful. We've got huge heat pipes. I don't know if you folks can see that at Check home. Check out my pipes. Look at those pipes, folks. <laughs> <laughs> underneath there. Now, there's a couple of things about this. Now, we've got PCI Express. Right. X16, which we're going to pull this protective cover off because uh, that's just there for shipping and, and transport. Then we've got power here for okay. PCI Express power input because this card 
it takes more power than what the PCI Express bus can provide. Right. So if you plug everything in, you fire it up, and you're finding that it's not booting or you're not getting any video, you probably forgot the power adapter to go into there. So that comes from the power supply and goes into the PCI Express power input for the graphics card. Okay. So it's honking huge, Sash. This is two, the depth of two standard video cards. Okay. So that means we're going to have to, first of all, plot out which... PCI Express port we're going to put it in. Now, obviously, it's not going to go in uh, the one over here. I'm going to get in a little bit tighter for you so that you can see. Can you grab that? And uh, so it's not going to go here. We're not going to put it here because that's going to take up three slots. You'll see that on this motherboard, they've been smart. They've planned for it. We've got a PCI Express X16 and a blank spot here because they've planned that you've got a nice thick gaming graphics card there. So that's the one we're going to go into. So we need to look at this and see that we need to remove one and two uh, screws here to get those okay. guys out. Okay. I'll just start these with my itty bitty screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here, I'll let you take over. Okay. This is your thing. Dave, she's doing it. She's doing the build, man. I'm just helping out. Okay, that's right. My, oh. And then just pull those uh, protective covers off. Oh, okay. As soon as you've oh, got I might be tightening there. it. Oh, you're loosening okay. it. Okay. Yep, that's right. Okay. Let her go. <laughs> <laughs> and then pr go. pull yep, these? Pull those up. Yep. Okay. Oh, this way. Okay. Got it. There we have it. Right. So now our video card is going to go into the slot. Okay. Ready for it? Now you've done this with RAM. You know exactly what you're doing. Oh, yeah? Uh, no worries. <laughs> okay. So okay. this is going to go into this X16 right here. Okay. And that's already open. So we can see that if you ever need to change your BIOS battery, guess what? You're going to have to take out your video card. Okay. okay. This is already... Yeah, that's Ready? open. So okay. you see that, folks? Sasha was smart there. Make sure that that's open because Robbie tends to forget these little minor details. And then okay. I just... So, yeah, you just kind of push her down. It I locks think, in. Yeah. And then use your finger to get into that thing that was unlocked and, and make sure that that is now clipped and locked. Yes. Good? Yes. Okay. So now screw it back in. Oh. Right where the screws came out of. <laughs> and there you go, folks. Look at that. So we've got two DisplayPort, two HDMI, and a DVI all coming off of the same graphics card ready for VR. I feel nervous. Why are you okay. nervous? She's doing it. She's got this. It's going to be a sweet gaming rig, folks. Um, if you've got any suggestions for you, for Sasha, we'd love to hear them. First of all, because we're so close to being ready with this gaming rig, we're going to have to start selecting software. We know that we want Linux on it and Steam. So the real deciding thing as far as, you know, which Linux distro are we going to go with, Sasha, it mm -hmm. really boils down to which one is going to play Steam games really, really well. Uh, so if you've got any suggestions, if you've already tried this out on your own and you know what is great for Steam or video games, virtual reality, and so on, hey, get onto our community forum. Go to forum.category5.tv and submit your post there. Or better yet, get right into the particular forum thread that has to do with this build at cat5.tv slash CPU 2017. And it's done. Yes. There just, you go. Just like that. So we've got some wiring to do still, Sasha. But essentially, there you go. There's your game and rig. Dave is going to be thrilled. Yay! <laughs> Happy so far? Yes. How have you found... Now, you've been building this thing from scratch. Yes. How have you found the process? Because there's a lot of people that are watching tonight that have thought, hey, it'd be really cool to build my own computer, but it looks really daunting. I don't know where to start. It is, this series is taking you right through it. It's doable. All you need is Robbie. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you don't. No, it's, it's I make mistakes actually, like using really tiny screwdrivers and yeah, things it's, like that. It's actually really cool to be a part of this, like to actually get in there. I would have been petrified to do it alone, but sure. you know what? If I knew that I could watch me, future me doing it, I don't know. Yeah, yeah perhaps yeah. watching this video will give some confidence yeah. and, and so that you know kind of what to expect. Every computer is a little bit different, but you can get our product list, the hardware that we've purchased for this particular rig at cat5.tv slash CPU 2017. It's all listed there and how we decided to get those. So, yes. All right, we've got to take a real quick break, Sasha. And when we come back, I know you're ready with, uh, with the news. So we're 
We're just going to fade to black and come right back, and uh, then it's all you. Super. Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Ubuntu is dropping the 32-bit ISO. Unfortunately, some people still use Internet Explorer, and yet another serious exploit has been found. Dyson plans to release a radical electric car in 2020, and Equifax doesn't seem to have a grasp on security. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, you'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit Category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners, and thank you for watching. This is the Category5.tv newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. If you are hoping to download Ubuntu 17.10 32-bit, come its release next month, we've got some bad news to give you. Ubuntu is dropping 32-bit builds of Ubuntu desktop entirely as of Ubuntu 17.10. Canonical's Dmitry John Ledkov has asked the Ubuntu release team to action a proposal he put forth earlier in the development cycle in which he argued that the i30 i386 builds of Ubuntu desktop, aka 32-bit builds, should no longer be produced. No changes are being made to other builds of Ubuntu 17.10, such as minimal install ISOs or the net install option, and this news does not mean Ubuntu won't run on 32-bit, simply that you won't be able to download a pre-made desktop ISO image for it. The 32-bit Ubuntu archive is not going anywhere either. If you're currently running a 32-bit version of Ubuntu, you can continue to upgrade to new releases as normal. This change also does not affect Ubuntu flavors such as ex ex Zubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, Ubuntu Budgie, and et al. They'll be free to make their own decisions about what they support. And there's always Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, which is supported until 2021 and readily available as a 32-bit image. Wow. Here's a question I have. Yeah. Um, who would want to download... You know, so, the, the whole 32-bit versus 64-bit right. argument, the 32-bit kernel is um, anything up until three, three and a half uh, gigs of RAM, you okay. were fine to run a 32-bit OS. There was a time years ago when it was really hard to get a 64-bit OS. Right. But what does it mean? It means that you, your computer can run faster. It means it can do more operations at any given time. Mm -hmm. It means that you can have more RAM. Like we're putting 32 gigs of RAM in a computer for you. And that could not happen on a 32-bit operating system. Okay. It has to be 64-bit. So what's this whole Ubuntu thing? Ubuntu, of course, is a flavor of Linux. Mm -hmm. Linux is an alternative to Microsoft Windows. It's an alternative to Mac OS. And it, it is a free operating system for your computer. So right. thanks to that, you've got bleeding edge technology and now they're saying, hey, here's our free OS and we're keeping up with the times. We're dropping the 32-bit ISO, which is the downloadable disk that you can install on your computer. Right. And instead, we're pushing you to have to install the 64-bit. So that means no more older hardware that doesn't support 64-bit. Because when okay. you say i386, 32-bit, those are the old computers. So if you've got an old 486DX... <laughs> you're not going to be able to install from the ISO uh, yeah. Ubuntu any longer because it's passe, it's old technology. 64-bit is the way to go, and that's what they're pushing for. But good note that if you already have 32-bit Linux installed, you can upgrade. Right. You can get the latest and greatest. You just have to, you have to get the installer from the older version and then upgrade from there, which right. is fine. That's it's fine. all right because you already have it, so you're okay. If you're curious about Ubuntu, if you're curious about Linux, hey, get onto our website, category5.tv, click on Contact Us. There's a way to actually reach out to the show. We'd love to field your questions. Excellent. Thank you. I'll just kind of slide over here <laughs> into the abyss until I'm needed again. 
There's a bug in the most current version of Internet Explorer that leaks the addresses, search, search terms, or any other text typed into the address bar. The bug allows any currently visited website to view any text entered into the address bar as soon as the user hits enter. The technique can expose sensitive information a user didn't intend to be viewed by remote websites, including the web addresses, addra address the user is about to visit. The hack can also expose search queries since IE allows them to be typed into the address bar and then retrieved from Bing or other search services. This weakness may allow malicious sites to view information the user presumed was private. People should strongly consider using Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, or another non-IE browser. That's a huge scary deal goes without saying at this point don't use internet explorer if you bring yeah. up that e that blue e any longer if that's what you're using to surf the web you're doing it wrong please listen to me when i say start using chrome start using firefox start using a more modern browser internet internet explorer is done right and like windows xp it's not safe to use anymore some would say it ever was right now so do they do they try and push themselves or are they just a default sort of do they realize the like, users yeah well does it come pre about? does it come preloaded on computers internet explorer older computers yes yes uh, windows XP, okay windows 7 had internet explorer pre-installed right now if you're on windows 10 it comes with a program called edge microsoft edge which is their replacement for internet explorer but still i would lean toward um, Chrome would probably be right. my suggestion. And there, there are reasons for that beyond, it's not a brand war, it's nothing like that, mm -hmm. other than from Microsoft's perspective. Microsoft wants you to use only their software. If they can have it their way, that's how it would be. Uh, yeah. But the other products that are out there are simply more current, more safe, mm -hmm. more bleeding edge, and you know, a lot of, any piece of software can have exploits. Any piece of software, be it Edge, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer can have these kinds of problems. Right. But the fact is, Chrome is bringing out, this is a Google-owned product, is bringing out a new version all the time. Anytime there's an exploit found, they're fixing it. Right. Now, on the other side of this is Internet Explorer. This is from Microsoft, if I could say Internet. Internet Explorer. This is no longer supported. Okay. So like Windows XP, as exploits come out, as things are discovered like this, the problem will remain for all time. So right. if you continue using that product, you're no longer going to be safe against that particular threat. Now, this one's a bad one. You consider yes. if you're on a website and then you start typing something into the address bar, which you think is your search engine or um, going to another website. If you're, if you're on this malicious website and you enter category5.tv in the address bar, it will know that you have now gone to category5.tv. Normally that information is not shared with the website. Right. Which can be an issue if you're doing things like a private search. I don't know really what you could do in your address bar that would be uber private. I mean, oh, I went to Facebook. Oh, I went to Google. But still, you still want to things. know. Yeah, you want to know that your stuff is secure, and it's not when you're using Internet Explorer. That's Absolutely. Just it. This particular exploit, too, because now we think about exploited websites are vulnerable to collecting this data. Right. And so you think, well, who would do that? Why would I be on a website that is malicious. Right. I don't go to those kinds of websites, you might say. The fact is, here's how hackers do it, how fishers do it, and these kinds of things. They buy ad space. Right. You might be on Yahoo. You might be on Facebook, and you are being served ads. Right. And these people who are selling advertisements may not catch that the particular advertisement that they are hosting is malicious. Uh, I saw one on Yahoo that was installing malware directly on people's computers because it was an infected flash object that was installing this malware on Internet Explorer driven computers. So this kind of stuff happens. Hackers know that, hey, I, I, I may not be able to get you to come to my website, but I can put my code on a particular popular website that I know you're going to frequent. All right. It's scary stuff. Can be. Well, so don't use Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it all boils down to. In a nutshell. To. Yeah.
Yeah. Oh. Switch to Chrome, switch to Firefox, anything but IE. Right. Internet Explorer. I have a fun news story coming Do you? up. Yes. Ooh. So, they're di- all fun. They're all fun. This one's less scary. Okay. Maybe. Phew. <laughs> oh. Less conspiracy theories moving forward. Yes. Dyson, the engineering company best known for its vacuum cleaners and fans, plans to spend two billion pounds developing a radical electric car. The battery-powered vehicle is due to be launched in 2020. Dyson says 400 staff have been working on the secret project for the past two years at its headquarters in Wiltshire. However, the car does not yet exist, with no prototype built, and a factory site is yet to be chosen. Sir James declined to give further details of the project, with only the only leaked information being an internal email where, email where he simply states, competition for the new technology in the autom- automotive industry is fierce, and we must do everything we can to keep the specifics of our vehicle confidential okay this is why it's exciting to me okay because it's out of left field Dyson they make what? they make vacuum cleaners they kind of make they, they dabble do. in tech and like, interesting yeah. stuff I love it I I just for something I, I I know that there are a bunch of companies out there that are really focusing on these cars and I get it but Dyson it just blows me away. I'd be able to do something interesting. Now, here's where I wish I had artistic abilities. Yeah. And maybe here's your challenge this week, my friends. Come up with a concept car that Dyson might create. I'm picturing probably powered by a tornado, possibly <laughs> a black hole. They have that swivel ball thing. S- yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be wild. It, I want to see your caricatures of this car. I love this idea. It's it's going to. It's probably going to be the best-selling car of 2020. This is the strangest I've, leak ever, though, when you think about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're bringing out a car, but not telling you anything about it. Well, also, they Nothing. don't. They don't have a prototype. They, they don't, don't have. <laughs> they, they don't have We've anything. We've been working on it for two years. In our Let's mind. go back a little. <laughs> We've been working on it for two years. Uh, we're not telling you anything about it. It's top secret, and uh, we, we don't have anything. We don't have a location. It's going to be built. Yeah, we don't, we don't have. We, we, but we know how much money we're going to spend on it. <laughs> in other words, two years ago, they were sitting around having a glass of wine and said. Yeah, we should do an electric car. You know it would be crazy. There, we've been doing this for two years. Maybe it's a street sweeper. Weird. <laughs> With the it'll Dyson clean, vac. Yeah, it'll clean the streets. Mind-boggling. <gasps> Maybe it'll scrub the air. That's why they can't say anything, because iRobots are going to sue them for the idea. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Roombas. That's what I'm thinking Roombas. about. <laughs> They'll sue I'm... anything that represents or resembles a Roomba. How great would it be? Cleaning the streets. The Dyson car. Nice. <laughs> okay. In failing to correctly patch a known vulnerability and exposing the personal data of potentially 143 million Americans to hackers, oh. Equifax made a security blunder of epic proportions. However, it appears the company is just getting started. Leaving its digital doors wide open to criminals apparently wasn't enough for the credit reporting agency as it's now sending hack victims directly into the open arms of unknown internet pranksters. Yes, Equifax is directing those concerned about the data breach and its repercussions to a fake website set up to troll the company itself. That's right. The official Equifax Twitter account is pointing people to what looks to be a fake site, a.k.a. a phishing site. Equifax created a very real site, www.equifaxsecurity, where people can enter their last name along with the last six digits of their social security number to see if they were affected by the hack. Unsurprisingly, someone cloned that site and hosted a copy at a very similar URL, which is www.securityequifax.com. The two sites, one real and one fake, look like the same to the casual observer. In fact, they are so easily confused that Equifax itself apparently can't tell the difference. Thankfully, the maker of the spoofed site seems more interested in calling out Equifax for their incompetence than stealing the personal information of unsuspecting victims. The header of the fake site reads, Cybersecurity Incident and Reporting customer information which is totally fake why did equifax use a domain that is so easily impersonated by a phishing site 
The spoof, certain, the spoof site goes on saying Equifax should have hosted this on Equifax.com with a reputable SSL certificate. Instead, they chose an easily impersonated domain and used a jelly bean SSL cert that any script kitty can impersonate in 20 minutes. It's not clear if the site captures the data entered by a tricked consumer or if it discards it. There is no real contact information on the page and many of the links take you to a YouTube video for Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. Nice. <laughs> okay, so they've pulled it off and they've tricked people into going to this and Equifax themselves have tweeted the phishing site. Yes. It is crazy. I just, it's, it's funny because I don't know if you noticed, it was like one of them was security Equifax and the other one was Equifax yeah. security. They so I can, they just reversed it. Yeah. So it's actually like legit looking for the sure. dyslexic. But you they're would, right. Yeah. Oh, Ugh. you sure. But why would they ever register a domain like that? It's stupid. Right. Now I did go back over category five TV and made sure, and yes, we did give the correct address for you, but fact is Equifax themselves gave the wrong one right hello so thankfully um, they um, they caught on and and stopped it right but, um, and thankfully the person who was responsible was just having a little bit of fun right. but you know who knows what the next guy could be right exactly but that's all the time that we have <sighs> all Get right your comments in exactly Post them below Big thanks this week to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. Well, Sash, that's all the time that we have tonight. It's been a lot of fun. I can't believe Season 11 has kicked off. Yeah. Way to go. Way to go. And uh, we're one step closer to having that computer ready for you. So we'll see you next week when we finally fire it up. Awesome. Take care, everybody. Bye. Good night.